Hi everyone, it's Sam, NFT Statistics with your Proof Daily Countdown. Bringing you the charts, the pictures, the stories, the data that matter most in NFTs every single day. Let's get right to it, starting with a quick market overview. ETH volumes were down, you can see that line, they just continue to trend lower. Most of the volume still with blur about 75%. And unique buyers also is down a fair bit. And this is really kind of below even like the pre-blur levels. So seeing seeing buyers kind of going in the wrong direction. One chart I've showed you in the past, haven't showed you in a while, is the average royalty paid per day. I think this is kind of surprising. The open sea royalty per, per paid per day on average has been between about two and a half and three percent. You know, I'd kind of thought that it would really quickly go down to the minimums, but we haven't really seen that. So that's kind of an interesting trend and nice to see. In terms of where prices are going, they're really going down. You know, the large cap index really struggling. You can see it in this chart, a bit of strength in gutter, but a lot of weakness in doodles, clone X and moonbirds. If you look at this chart, this is just looking at doodles, clone X and moonbirds. You can see that that index equal weighted is down more than 50% in the past five months. So really a lot of concentrated weakness in those collections. In terms of mid caps, they've been down as well, kind of hitting, hitting some new year to date lows for this index in ETH terms. Yesterday, Forgot Ruins was up, Quirkies were up, but a lot of weakness in VV checks. Wanted to look into that a little bit. You'll see here, this is the, the avatar that they're, or the, the metadata that they're using. Jack Butcher said he was going to start using different artist work as the, as the metadata for the checks. And you can really see here that this chart you know, went up from 2.5 to below one ETH. This is the first time it's been down there in a few weeks. Uh, what happened yesterday, as always, or as has really been the trend lately, it's not always the story that leads to these sudden drops. I think in this world of airdrop farming, people get really concentrated positions while they're airdrop farming on blur. And then one day just decide to take advantage of the liquidity and dump a lot at once. Yesterday, you had a single seller. What this looks at is the biggest buyers and sellers over the past 48 hours. You can see the biggest buyers, only about 15, 16, 19 NFTs. The biggest seller dumped 427 and didn't buy any. So you had someone who was net, net selling 427 in one go. You know, that's always going to be very, very weak for the floor price. The buyers who had those bids in dumped them further and you kind of get this chain reaction. And that's what happened with checks yesterday. In terms of art projects, you know, pretty low volume in the art space, one Fidenza sale, you know, but only four projects that did more than 10 ETH the volume. Not a whole lot here uh, to get to uh, or to, to note or get too excited about. Story number two, the summoning. Finally, we get it from Yuga. Let's have a look at what happened. Here they tweeted, the summoning has begun. Eligible sewer pass holders can now head to a, a website and burn their sewer passes into a power source. What are some of the details? One is there was no rush to burn. Basically, I think you can burn indefinitely. I'm not sure if there's actually an expiration to it. There are eight different types of sources determined by the rank of your sewer pass. The number one source is that key. So there are seven new ones. Remember the key sold for a thousand ETH. Yeah, again, only seven revealed here. This The project is called HV-MTL, which is heavy metal. And the company, uh, there are 4,000 sewer passes that either did not get claimed or that did not play Dookie Dash. And Yuga is going to claim all of those. Those are the lowest ranked, uh, the lowest ranked, I guess, sources that will be out there. Here's the art. There are seven sources and pretty much all the NFTs within the different source tiers look identical. You just have a number on them, which says what, you know, what the ranking of the sewer pass was, but all of them fit into these seven types. Yeah, and which type you were in was fully dependent on what the rank of your sewer pass was. In terms of how they're trading, you can see the bottom four are all kind of in that 2.35 to 2.75 range. You know, so that's where the majority of the Dookie Dash passes were, or, or of the passes were, um, or the sewer passes. The top tier is the top 250. Those have a 25 E floor price. The second tier is 251 to 1250. Those have a, a floor price of about 8.5. And then yeah, if you're above that 1250 ranking, they're all kind of in those lower tiers where the prices aren't quite as high. Other things that were kind of interesting that happened here. One is they said that your tier of sewer pass. So remember, there used to be a tier one sewer pass, which is what the mutants got, and a tier four sewer pass, which is what a board eight plus board eight kennel club got. You know, there was always a, a price difference between those tiers, even when they had different rankings. And here in the Discord, Gary the Dog Prophet uh, says, basically that those tiers no longer matter. They're all equal. You can see that that led to a sharp correction in the sewer pass tier four prices. They were trading above four ETH yesterday and right now they've all converged. So who knows, that was a new communications that did catch some people off guard, as you can see from the prices. Here I did say that the boxes are all very similar in the same grouping, but you can see here 17839, each box does tell you what the ranking of the pass was. A couple things uh, that I just know, one is that there's not a huge apparent difference between the rankings within the bucket. 
but I'm sure we will find out more as time goes on. Secondly is companion trade. Remember, companion trade NFTs, we're trading at a 6.5 ETH floor. They are still in the NFT that you get as a, as a power source. It's just you know a quick checkbox that you can't tell a visual difference between them. There was a little bit of an error where the companion trade was being misrepresented uh, on the NFTs for the first few hours. And Yuga has agreed to compensate people who lost money because of that. So that was a real class move. Uh, good to see that happen. And then Yuga has hinted that owning uh, a heavy metal, a BAYC, a, a, a mutant ape, a board ape kennel club, that's going to be the no, new full set if you want to own them all for future things. So there will be clearly utility, but we, I'm sure this is going to play a lot into future games, future adventures that Yuga does. Curious to see how that all evolves. The next journey begins in May. All they've said is beginning May. So we'll see what happens when that rolls about. Third thing to talk about, a Sotheby's auction concluded yesterday. I've talked about it a couple times on the show. A lot of the artists who we like to follow had some pieces. Just wanted to highlight a few of the big sales. The first is this by I'm Laura L. Symphony in the City sold for 8.6 ETH. That was cool as well above kind of where the estimated price was for this work. Not quite her top sale. Her top sale was 9 ETH, but still up in that range. Really cool sale there. And then the last one I want to talk about, this one by OXDGB, this piece called Burn Event. Sold for 19.9 ETH. How cool is that? That's an all-time high for OXDGB. His highest sale before then, I believe, was 16.8 ETH. Sometimes I miss sales, but I believe that this getaway piece was 16.8 ETH, and I think that was his previous highest sale. So really cool to see this. When we first started talking about OXDGB, our show's only been going on for two months. When we started talking about it, you know, maybe six weeks ago, his sales were in in the single digits. So really awesome to see that he's already jumped up to this 20 ETH range. A couple thoughts on just these auctions in general, like the pros and cons. First of all, they have big fees. You know, Sotheby's takes 26% on most sales versus Super Rare, AOTM taking 15%. Two is it's an unfamiliar buying experience for most people who want to buy. I was thinking about going in and buying or going and bidding on, Patter- on, on Harvey Rayner, Pattern.co's piece, but it just becomes kind of a pain. I'm just so much more used to doing things on Super Rare, on OpenSea, et cetera. The third thing, and I think this is pretty big, is you do have KYC requirements in order to create an account and bid. And, bid, and you also have currency fluctuations. You have to bid in US dollars, even though you can pay in Ethereum. So I think all of those factors, you know, make sometimes lead to lower sale prices for the auctions. Sometimes I showed you some of the best, but sometimes you do get kind of a slight headwind that can lead them to be a little bit lower. On the positive side, you do have huge brand recognition for Sotheby's for Christie's, and you do have a new set of buyers potentially. And a lot of people look at Sotheby's who don't look at OpenSea. I'm not sure that a lot of NFT buyers do. We haven't really seen that big money come into the space yet that isn't there already, but hopefully that will happen over time. No question, these auctions are great exposure for our space. There is another auction that Sotheby's Metaverse just announced, and this one is 3D animation NFTs. And this is honestly, this is some of the coolest stuff. I think it's really worthwhile to go to Sotheby's page, find this natively digital, oddly satisfying page. There's just, it's just a lot of fun to look at these animations, whether or not you wanna buy them, some really cool art being sold there. Fourth thing to talk about, ordinals. Wanna talk a bit about D-Gods and a bit about Yuga. First of all, the Yuga 12-fold NFTs have listed now, and this is at ordinals.market. And you can see there being, you know, the prices right now are 29 ETH, 30 ETH, something in that range. Where they're listed, the highest bid is 20 ETH, and there has not been a single transaction yet. This is, this is kind of interesting because in Bitcoin terms, at least, and Bitcoin is up since the auction, but in Bitcoin terms, this is below two Bitcoin. So that is, you know, well below the low end of the range for where people were allowed to buy these ordinals uh, during the auction couple things I just say. One is that mints are not risk-free. You know, it happens, you know, you buy them hoping they'll go up, but sometimes that buy is the peak FOMO, the peak of the moment, at least, at least for a little while, and then they can go down. And secondly, momentum is everything. You know, it's all about, it, it does the story have momentum. Are people talking about them in a positive way? And I think with you, it's been pretty mixed. And as a result, you're seeing the price go down a touch. Um, other thing I want to talk about the ordinals is that D-Gods yesterday announced that they are launching their ordinals and they're doing it this week. They said it will probably be on Friday. There are 535 D-Gods that they are putting on Bitcoin. Uh, and there's kind of an interesting format for it. Again, 500, the price they're doing is point, or 0.444 Bitcoin, 6.6 SOL, 550, uh, 6.6 ETH, 558 SOL. Why is that? That's the floor price for D-Gods right now. So they're making these Bitcoins equal price to the floor price of the SOL ones that they have. It is first come, first serve. It's going to be the first come for serve at that price. Whoever wants to go in can get it, but that's only for 500 of them. There are 34 others that are going to be auctioned in dust, which is their native currency. And that's going to be after the first come first serve uh, uh, process. The other thing is that the very first one is going to be the original Frank. This is the very first NFT that Frank had as part of D-Gods. 
that is going to be the very first auction. That's going to be before the first come, first serve. Uh, and that's going to be fun to see. That also will be auctioned in dust. Kind of an interesting story. Where are these D-Gods coming from? Where are these 535? Why do they have 535 new D-Gods? These are all D-Gods that were burned. Okay. And the reason they burned them, they used to have a tax and they would charge everybody in the early days, anyone who listed below the floor and sold, they would charge 33% royalties on those sales. And those, that 33% would go into a treasury and that treasury would be used to buy floor NFTs and burn them. So the ones that are being auctioned are the ones that were burned with that treasury. So kind of bringing them back to life on Bitcoin, kind of cool, kind of clever. I think Frank, I think this team's always doing cool stuff. So that's pretty cool to see. Last thing to talk about, a few notable sales. First, this Autoglyph sold for 493, 495 USDC, massive sale. You know, it's one of the one of the highest Autoglyph sales in a very long time, not of all time, but it's been a while since we've had a sale at this price. Uh, in trade, the buyer was curated, you know, curated just has a collection of all the top grails. So not surprised to see them, the buyer. And this is cool. They bought them directly from Matt and John, the founders of Larva Lab. So this purchase directly from the team that made this art, these are going to be, this is of course the first sale. Uh, and I'm sure they've held it since mint. They talked about how it has symbol scheme nine, I believe. What's interesting about autoglyphs is each autoglyph is made with different characters. You're only made with a few characters. This one, is, you know, and they have different rarities based on which characters they're made of. This one is made from the symbol set nine. You can see those brackets. There are only 11 of them in existence. Symbol scheme 10 is the most rare, only eight. But this is clearly a grail. One of the first of this scheme. I think it's the first to have sold in over two years. So that's kind of interesting. Here is a, a collect. This is you know not curated's first autoglyph. They own 11 autoglyphs. Again, autoglyphs, the first big project that really did the art fully on chain. So has a ton of provenance. Very uh, you know small supply, but always cool when one of those sales happens. You can see here, there have only been two sales in the past five months. So very liquid NFT, but still very cool to see this. Congrats to uh, the buyers there, as well as to Matt and John. Second sale to talk about, 12 checks number 10, sells for 17 ETH. Again, this 12 checks, this was kind of, we talked about this a couple of days ago. This is what Jack Butcher made. He dropped all of these NFTs to people who had one check NFTs. Okay, and to get a one check, I think you have to burn 64 of the other checks, of the original checks. But he dropped one of these to, to, to the 12 holders of single checks. Again, this was meant to kind of poke fun, be a bit of a meme around the ordinals that Yuga made. But this is the first sale that we've seen where one actually sold for 17 ETH. So pretty awesome airdrop for whoever got this, whoever got this sale to just get 17 ETH on the back of it. It was bought by Barat. He says that he thinks with only 12 of these, there he has a suspicion that they will be mimetically and historically relevant. So cool to see that. If you like it, you want to buy one too. I know this price is super high. The floor right now for these pro for this product is 20 ETH. There are three listed for sale. You can see them there. Last sale to talk about this piece, Air by Rip Cash, was the most expensive sale of the day on Super Rare. 27 ETH bought by Pablo Pancaso. Pretty awesome. You know, Rip Cash, we've talked about a lot in the show, so I won't go too deep into him, but other top sales he's had on Super Rare, 22 ETH, 24 ETH, all have this very similar feel. But again, this is another artist where the prices just seem to be, be progressing higher and higher. You know, just in the past two months, we were seeing sales in the mid to high teens. It just feels like that number is going higher and higher with every sale. So congrats to Rip, Rip Cash and congrats to Pablo Pancaso. That's all from me. I hope you enjoyed the show. Obviously had a lot to talk about today. If you did like it, like it below. Do subscribe to our channel. Tell us what you think in the comments. I read them all, respond to a bunch of them, and we'll be back tomorrow and every weekday with another show. Have a good day.